Big man knows everything about Grant. Well, also, uh, big shout out to the guys that are making this possible. Loyola the rugby crew, they're whirling around out here and their uh, Hawaiian shirts having a good time. But enough about that. We are here at SeatGeek Stadium, Matt. What is this like? This is this is heaven on earth, ladies and gentlemen. This is our Super Bowl of Major League Rugby. It's the first neutral site final in the league's history. Six seasons. It's hard to believe that we're in six seasons already, guys. And Chicago, the Windy City, the epicenter of rugby in the United States. Some of the biggest moments with the All Blacks being here against Team USA. The All Blacks in Ireland. Ireland beating the All Blacks for the first time in a zillion years the same week that the Cubs won the World Series. If you don't, this, this is the perfect place to do this. Absolutely, and, and I've had the pleasure of spending the whole season here as a sideline commentator with the Chicago Hounds, and it was such a joy not only dealing with the staff, of course, you know, um, you know, Sam Harris, coach, all the boys on the team, and uh, James English were absolutely phenomenal to me, and what a great experience. I mean, uh, I, Matt, I remember you being on the call when Toronto uh, was here visiting and being on the sidelines, the snow coming <laughs> sideways, 20 degrees, it was still fabulous, and a shout out to those fans that showed up on that day. They showed their medal. They were tough, Chicago tough, as I like to say, and really showed the Hounds some love. So a big shout out to them, a big shout out to the Hounds, and a big shout out to SeatGeek Stadium because they've done a great job this season. And, and a shout out to him because he stood on that sideline and he had the long coat, but it wasn't waterproof, and no hat, yet he looked marvelous. He looked really good. Yeah. yeah, Rob Hammersmith looking really good. But, hey, we <laughs> talked about great atmospheres, great stuff. We are, we are here in Chicago. But let's talk about possibly Matt McCarthy claimed on Rugby Wrap-Up this week it is probably the best fan experience in rugby, and that is Fort Quincy. Uh, Thomas Grant, tell us a little bit about Fort Quincy, what's up there, and uh, these Free Jacks and how they're rolling into the uh, MLR finals. Oh, it's great, mate. And, and today feels a little bit like a, a Fort Quincy festival, so to say. We've got – music in the morning you've got rugby in the afternoon and then you've got a, a big awesome concert after plenty of food options uh and i think that's the key thing is to deliver a bit more of a product off the field than just the, the footy on it so uh yeah lots of entertainment for punters out there to, to come along and see a lot more than just 80 minutes of rugby it's great yeah that's a beautiful thing they call it you know rugby tainment right so it's, it's yes there is the rugby but there's a whole lot of entertainment around it we've talked a lot of, uh, about this on the rugby rant and you just look out in the you know, the tailgate, there's a lot of people enjoying the atmosphere, taking it in, and we're at 11 o'clock. We're three, ga three, three hours from kickoff, and fans are enjoying the experience, that's enjoying great. the day, and I think that's the brilliance of what today's going to bring here in 2023. And, you know, fans were able to plan to come to this yeah. for the first time, right? And that was a big, big, it was a big decision by the owners and the yeah. league to do this. It took some guts to do it because they were all content with, you know, if we get a, uh, the local team might have their fans and we'll get 5,000 at a stadium. But we're, we got good ticket sales for this. This is a great stadium, SeatGeek Stadium, and it's real grass. Yeah. I'm on yeah. that grass yesterday. I'm so, like, oh, oh heck. Every team that's come through here has absolutely said this is the best surf that they have played on. Right, and I saw you got stuck with the groundskeeper earlier. Joel, today. you Joel, so I talked to him for about him. a half hour. I mean, you stop your exactly. You, that's a short conversation, right? <laughs> he'll sit here, he'll tell you that he's not happy with his grass, he's not right. happy with his facility, how it is. But everybody else is like, "This is amazing! What are you talking about, man? This is awesome!" So, um, yeah, the surface, the day, dropkick Murphys. Let's talk overall about the Major League Rugby season that was 2023. Yeah. What really stuck out to you, Rob? What was one thing that you take away from this season that that really took MLR to the next level. Well, I, I guess I'd frame it as as a recovery, right? I think the the league took a little bit of a hit after last season. Of course, Austin and LA, Matt representing here, um, <laughs> a lot of fans. I think their confidence waned a bit after that, uh, and the fact that they were able to come back, a new team comes into the league, and then we had a great season of rugby. We really did. There were a few hiccups, a couple of rain delays. Um, and cancellations or, or stoppages. But overall, the, the product on and off the pitch was awesome. Yeah, 100%. I agree with you, Rob. I think the, the key thing is that the, the quality product on the field is improving yeah. each year. More quality players coming into the league, domestic talents improving uh, year by year, which is great to see. And collectively, that flows through the top for our USA Eagles side. So I think that's the key thing. We, we want the rugby to be better collectively for America, uh, and it certainly is, is taking great strides. And, and the coverage. I mean, yeah. I, there are th those of us that remember the only thing that we could watch 
was the New Zealand, New Zealand All Blacks versus the, the, yeah. Barbar- the Barbarians on videotape yeah. over and over and over again. <laughs> now we have so many different choices. Yeah. The Rugby Network covers all the stuff. If they're not covering it live, you can watch it in replay. You can, you can get all the highlights, and it's free. Yeah. Matt, it, you're going to appreciate this because we're <laughs> of about the same age, but wheels, you'll find this interesting. Yeah. I mean, when I was first starting to play rugby for the Chicago Blaze Rugby Club here in Chicago, we get done with training session on a Thursday night. We go into the bar. That was a fortunate thing. And one of my rugby mates, shout out to Graham, Graham would bring in tapes that his father had sent him from New Zealand, right, of, of rugby in New Zealand that were a month old. Yeah. Wow. They, for us, it was that brand was new. like gold. Yeah. You know, some guys would take them home, and we'd get angry at those yeah. guys like, hey, did you bring it back? No, we, we want to watch some real good rugby, right? And we don't have to do that anymore. And I think that's the thing that, for me, as a guy who's been around rugby in Chicago for over 30 years, um, just makes me Hoops screen within 15 seconds so how times yeah. have changed i'm, I'm not going to lie but i was uh to prepare for this and actually know what i was talking about i listened to your show this past week so if i steal anything from it i don't expect anything from your lawyers please don't send them after me <laughs> um but i am stealing some of matt mccarthy stuff which is shameless plug it's fine if you're not listening to rugby wrap up mlr weekly M- the rugby odds under the rugby wrap up umbrella oh, man that's too ex- that, that, i mean that that's a lot going on there matt yes. like i mean uh, it's it's it a is. brand it is a brand. Hey, hey Ginty, what, what surprised me is Matt was is putting his stuff on Reddit now, too. So we have access through Reddit. I never thought Matt McCarthy would, would technologically get that piece in place. Hey, hey, if we talk so about crazy. Reddit, like, let, let's, like, let's, we're getting off the rails here, but I just want to talk to you Reddit trolls, all right? <laughs> they're, they're merciless to Matt McCarthy. They really are. I love it. But you know what I did? I did some digging, yeah. and it's one person <laughs> that's doing the same comments all the time. Who did you upset? It's the same uh, person. There's, a, there's like a phone Reddit. book. A, a yellow is page C- is full of it's, people it's that I've same, upset it's over the, the course of the year. Watch your car regi- uh, Probably. The, the yeah. Here no, in not going to mention Priceline. I'm not going to mention them. <laughs> the price. Yeah. But, um, but all right. So uh, as we're getting into this, let's actually talk about the, the game and what we're expecting and just your overall thoughts of what it's going to look like. Wheels, why don't you start? Oh, it's going to be a physical battle. Two very physical teams. San Diego, we, ne- we know how physical they are. Three jacks, we know how physical they are, so that's we'll key number one for me is that they're going to be extremely physical. I think set piece today is going to be extremely important for both teams. Both teams have outstanding set piece. They can attack from anywhere on the field. I think the entertainment factor of today's game is going to be huge. It's going to be a brutal, entertaining physical encounter, and, and that's the best way to describe it for me. Well, and let's go back to the original question that Ryan posed to us. You know, with the 2023 season, coming back how would we evaluate the league and I think one of the things comes back to this game right this yeah. is the matchup we were looking for and wanting almost all season two of the front running teams from the east to the west two of the I mean the best records in their respective conferences you know uh, 15 and 1 with San Diego 14 and 2 with New England and not to disrespect Matt McCarthy's uh, iron workers but you know <laughs> last year with what happened just you know before the playoffs with regard to Austin and LA and, and, you know, Houston and Seattle, you know, kind of sliding into the playoffs. Yeah. Um, Seattle gave a great battle uh, for New York in, that pl- in the final. But the fact is that it was unexpected matchups last year. This year we're getting the matchup that we wanted. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's one of those matchups that every other pro league in the United States would be salivating. Yeah. You've got East Coast versus West Coast. You have the wide open offense versus the, it's, I'm calling it the star-studded San Diego Legion versus the no names from the New England Free Jacks. <laughs> yeah. right? I'll buy that, I'll buy that. Hey, wheels might have to fight you. Yeah, we can talk bit. about that off the end <laughs> no, I'm just saying, you know, it's like, it's the, it's the perfect kind of matchup. And I know everybody wants their team in it, but only two teams can get in this thing. And we got the two best teams in this championship match. And I'm right in the middle of the battle, just like we're, you know, I'm midway. Right in the West. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's great. Uh, a new winner will be crowned today, right. right? A new name on that trophy, which is great for the league. Seeing some new teams punch through. Obviously, Seattle, we know uh, that they love making it to grand finals, but two new teams, an exciting battle. And that's it, perhaps the thing that, you know, I forgot, but thank you for reminding me that I love that we're going to have a new champion that we have never had before, yeah. which is tremendous. We had it last year, of course, with, with New York, but uh, we, we're guaranteed to get it this year, regardless of who comes away the winner. And we got so much to talk about going, oh, yeah. going forward, but I want to just say one thing. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're hearing music and noise in the background, this is the organic part of live 
television and next level rugby is bringing it to you so oh, yeah. be patient with us you could destroy us on reddit if you like <laughs> but this is a big ask look at that yeah. come on can we talk about that Matty? we have shaquille o'neal yeah. dj diesel performing like one of the biggest names in nba history is playing on a rugby yeah. field today and dropkick murphy's to round out the night like. well, he's not playing on the rugby field today <laughs> yeah. right so unless that's breaking news is that a late sign is he a medical joker for one of the teams yeah he could be <laughs> He's delivering the game ball, though. He is delivering the game ball. Here's, you know, again, going back to that question of, that was posed at the beginning. These two acts probably collectively, you, I mean, my partner Ty Braga did a little bit of research. Sheck, uh, I think, calls for about $150,000 to $200,000 for an hour yeah. of entertainment. And then we got the Dropkick Murphys. We're talking about a serious commitment to this entertainment that we're going to see today yeah. that's been made well, and, and, and let, Let's talk league. about SeatGeek and their ability to come in and really embrace the Hounds right. and literally provide this platform for Major League Rugby to, to really do it. Like, Teresa, phenomenal, doing great stuff running this facility, taking oh, yeah. care of us, doing a great job. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, You're Teresa. The best. We will stay out of your way. I We will get, we will get out of your way right away. Um, but yeah, so three um, hours from now, three, three, three hours from now, we just got to do that. You know, she, she is, she is great. Um, and again, like this is the home, right? As we see Andrew Newman kind of walking around out there for, uh, the Chicago hounds. But, um, so this is the pregame that we're getting into right now. Major league rugby finals, 2023. We are coming to you live from sea geek. We're going to take a quick break, uh, get away a little bit, reset, come in, get focused. And then, uh, we're going to unleash these three to really kind of, uh, wrap it around in about, uh, 15 minutes we will have the ceo of the new england free jacks hey, alex magleby will be here how about alex uh oh yeah yeah yeah. you're your boss right like, I mean, it's your boss right there. I'm for this one yeah so we'll, we'll move you off and we'll let him sit have you there, ever so seen alex magleby and woodgy in the same place at the same time i'm gonna keep this is my conspiracy theory i think mags is woodgy I mean, uh, I, I, are you arguing that? I'm not going to confirm or deny it. Let's keep, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to confirm He's or deny it. got to keep this boss happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah you've got to keep the boss happy. <laughs> All right, speaking of keeping the boss happy, uh, let's go ahead. Let's keep some advertisers happy right now. Let's get this out here. I'll roll a couple commercials. We'll be back in about uh, five minutes, so stay tuned. Next Level Rugby Live coming to you on the Rugby Network, YouTube, Facebook, all over the places. Rugby wrap-up, the rugby rant. And when, when are you starting a podcast? I've got one. It's just... Very, very mellow what is it? at the moment. It just hasn't skyrocketed. Oh, it hasn't Where's skyrocketed. It is, it, is it Wheels Boost? What's the name of it? Where's with Wheelsy? Where's, okay. There you go. Where's Wheelsy? It up, Where in the world is Wheels, uh, <laughs> Carmen San Diego? So let's go ahead. Uh, let's jump out, and uh, we'll be back. Big Kiwi with the Scottish last name. Buckley digs it out. Heighton has it. Nice look back inside from Walden. Here comes Kara Pryor. Kara Pryor starting off with a try. Kara Pryor and the somersault for five. Trick when these two teams met in round three. Baker tripped up, gets right back up. Baker gets rid of it. Now they got something brewing here. Banana shot runs <laughs> over a man. Takes it in! And play with England. This is what Jared Adams is. This is what we talk about. This is a guy, 255 pounds, who runs like a fullback. The crowd is into it. He has support. He has one to beat. Can he get there? He's picking him all the way to the edge. That ball goes wild, but there's more support there. And that try is on. A product. He's in the middle of that. And they've won the penalty. And the short side is open. Bowen's in space. Deshaun Bowen rounds the first tackle. Breaks the next one. McManus didn't like what he saw there. Played it to the near side. Team, one of their props, Akue. Great play there. Akue gets it off and into the hands. And it's taken off. Now I feel like Russell. Yeah, they don't want it done like I want it, dog. Yeah, they say they want it, then they took the summer off. I've been. Stade Toulouse, the most decorated rugby team in the world is coming to Salt Lake City to face off against the USA national team. It's a game that promises to be filled with passion, grit, and determination. Don't miss out on the chance to witness history in the making. Join us September 17th at America First Field 
Get your tickets now at therugbyalliance.com. Finally, a bounce that goes the arrow's way. And look at Oideman just loving that pop-up he got. Yeah, one, first try. And again, we mentioned that match down at Nola. They came away with a one-point victory, but certainly took it out of them. It may have been a factor in those two losses. Futi with the hat trick. Ina Futi take a bow, his third of the night. You can see here, it comes down the blind. AJ sees their space. The wingers have come up. And just, he's too fast. Great play. You know, Futi secures the victory on the road for the Seawolves. All clear. He's outstanding clear. defensively in the first. Look, I don't want to talk. This is a textbook drive from the line out. The arrow pole is just run out. There's numbers here for the projector inside the 22. The offload wants to go over the top. Was it forward? No, says the referee. He's given the try. The short side. It's inside where it goes. The bonus point is secured for the New England Free Jacks. He's got one under his belt. They're still moving. Now they're arriving. Watchings over the line. His try. And his also for the New England pass. He's going to get one for himself. Waiting to get the massage. He pushes it flat. He had gone forward. But again, another try scoring pass from the young Canadian. Same place anywhere yes. this weekend. Yes, it'll happen. I don't. I don't buy it. I'm not buying it. But we'll have to move on. Because you believe I'm Woodsy. I do. I. I know you're Woodsy. <laughs> I know you're Woodsy. It's got you written it's all over it. This is one of the it. great conspiracy theories of the world. And did Matt McCarthy start it, or did somebody else do? Has anybody Matt else brought have, that up to you? He might might have also started that Eric Anderson started COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Oliver Stone and I are working on this. Okay, okay? we got this. We're gonna we're gonna nail you two. Down to this whole gotcha. thing. All right. But all kidding aside, Max, this is a huge moment in your franchise's history. Yeah. It's been a great season. You know, they keep talking about the San Diego winning streak, but you guys have had a winning streak of your own. Two consecutive seasons. You lost your captain to an injury, Josh Larson, and the team just kept ticking. You lost your MVP of the league for last year, Bodine Walker, and all of a sudden, Jason Patras just steps right in, and he is as smooth as they come, right? So what? how did this all come about? 
And yeah, just a big shout out to Tom Kindly, our general manager, and our head coach Scott Maffey. They've built a great culture uh, that continues to drive forward the values of the organization. And we said at the very beginning, and Tom does a great job, kind of scouring the earth, finding talent, and then Scott does a fantastic job pulling them all together, people from all over the world, and our domestic players, and making it a, a great place that people want to play. And, and we got the tagline: it's the star-studded San Diego Legion versus the no-name New England Free Jacks, <laughs> right? I mean, we do, you know the guys aren't household names, but here, we, here you are. Guy. I mean, do, do, are you going to buy that from yeah, Matt McCarthy? The no-name New England Free Jacks. I'll, I'll take it. What, what, yeah, no name is great. <laughs> that was a compliment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say that we have some stars, uh, some pretty handy players, but I think yeah, you're so right. At the end of the day, they play for a bigger cause, and San Diego is a great team. Yeah. And I'm sure they, they, they probably have a great culture, too. Uh, I want to touch upon this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought, okay. For, All right. In the first Kindly couple, loves that, In the first way. couple of seasons, you know, the Free Jacks did not have the record in on-field performance that you're having in the last two seasons. And it can be sometimes difficult for owners to work through that. Has that been a difficult process to – Tell ownership it's going to take time. You're going to have to show patience, and the results will come. Yeah, and I guess what are we measuring, right? At the end of the day, is it has it ever been about on-field on performance? We certainly want to put a great product out there yeah. that makes our people proud, and certainly winning helps with that. There's no question. Yeah. You know, that first year was a was a, good, was a really good team. You know, basically a game away from making the playoffs as well, uh, and a nice home record as well that year. So it's just, it continues to build, and we've always said that we want to be able to put out a high-quality product every year um, and not break the bank doing that, but that it's whatever product that is, is our people are very proud of it. And, and about proud of it, like, yeah. I don't mean to cut you off here, but, like, one thing when we were, I was rolling in as an enemy to the New England Free Jacks with the Chicago Hounds, like, I bleed blue and red. I was wearing my tank top here yesterday. You guys that built Next Level Rugby, like no, no BS out there, people watching this. A lot of this is because Mags trusted Next Level Rugby because I cohorted with people like you and other likes. Don't ever well. touch me again. Yeah, don't ever touch him again. Yeah. <laughs> hey, guy, how you doing? Um, see, now I lost my train of thought. See, that's all it took. Where we're going. Uh, but anyways, thanks, Max, for building you know, Next yeah. Level Rugby's capability and for able to go out there. But going as an enemy there with Chicago Hounds into Quincy, you're driving the bus, and I'm watching the players, and they're looking out. And on the light post, there's Kyle Sakara, Mitch Wilson. And I'm not talking about at the stadium. I'm talking about through town. We were a 10-minute bus ride, and you just see this. I went after we did the MLR Academy. I went up there, and it was uh, – what's a grinder place? They sent me to Gelato, yeah. right? Gelato and more, whatever yeah. that is. There's a Free Jacks uh, – you got a jersey up there. They take it. But, like, the city of Quincy – and I remember when you told me that Quincy is a great build, right? Because we looked at the ICC together and we built yeah. tree forts and all the other stuff yeah. pre-COVID. Um, but you said that Quincy is taking you in. They're really embracing the Free Jacks, the brand, and they want to work with you. Could you ex tell me just about that relationship, how it even came to be? Yeah, so uh, the town of Quincy, 100,000 people, eight miles south of Boston. Always a town that kind of have a, has a chip on its shoulder. Um, people work really hard there, uh, but they take care of each other. Um, large Irish-American population, originally a large immigration population now from uh, with Chinese heritage, uh, and it continues to grow as this great community kind of sandwich between South Boston and the communities of the shore. And when we came into to Quincy, uh, the opportunity was there to be a part of that stadium build out. Uh, you know, it's an old stadium built in 1937, historic. And it's just been awesome to kind of share what rugby's about, you know, which is friendship and camaraderie and, you know, having a drink with friends and foe. And the people of Quincy really appreciate that. Just the, the, the culture of, of what it's all about. and. It's safe for families, and it's also safe to bring your college buddies. You know, and that's that's really cool. And I think everybody in Quincy's really gotten after that. And, and it sounds a lot like that the team is a reflection of the town. Hardworking, so. they grind, they support each other. Uh, it's, it's not about the individual. It's about what you do as a collective team. Can you talk a little bit about how that culture has emerged within the team? Yeah. I, I've heard, I've heard uh, coaches say, you know, People who talk about culture don't have culture. Yeah. So how did you guys develop? So, so when we decided that we were going to run this, you know, sports entertainment company, is, is why are we doing this? And at the, at the, at the heart of that is for community to come together. 
We just feel like the town square has disappeared in a lot of ways. Church has disappeared in a lot of ways for some people. But having this agnostic opportunity to bring, bring people together from all walks of life, celebrate you know, achievements on the field, but more importantly, just being together. And those three values for us were humble as we, and we defund. We really believe that joy is kind of the glue that makes it all work. And so that everything we do comes back to those three principles, whether it's rugby or throwing a music festival. Um, and, and that's what drives everything, are our choices. You know, I, Alex, I got to tell you, for me, going up to Quincy every time, and I'm a New York guy, right, and going to Boston, you know, there's that, it's the best sports rivalry or one of the best sports rivalries on the planet. But going up there and going into that place is like, for me, going into a field of dreams for rugby. You guys do it right. And, you know, c credit to you guys because you took a team, a franchise, brand new, and it didn't have a professional rugby team. And now you've made this into a rugby event, right? And that's what we got to do. If we had 12 to 13 Quincy's or, you know, Fort Quincy's in the league, but you're getting it right and you are showing others how to do this, you know, you go there, you got the music, you got the fan fest, you're not killing us for beers when we're at the beer line, which is a key component to this thing, right? We're not going to make up in beers we had in our lives there's a rugby match the eagles are playing and you talk to your non-rugby buddy and they're like not interested well you can watch old crow medicine show that continues to roll out to the non-rugby public which is really cool and five dollar beers five dollar beers you know it never hurts okay hey, i gotta more, ask you more than that yeah. if i could just interject here more than that i think uh, a credit to you alex and maybe you could talk a little bit about how you develop this is that it's it, when there's not rugby happening, you brought in other things for the community to rally around, yeah. right? There was, I think there was a brew fest there. Yeah. You've had other, you know, uh, film fests. So that Quincy has become not just a place for rugby, but as you, going back to your point, a place for the community to bond. And, and rugby has been an epicenter for that. Talk about where that came from and, and how that idea developed. Yeah, so rugby is obviously the engine of this whole company, and it, it's, it's at the core of what we're about. But what happens on those days for us is a lot of fun, bringing people together. Are there other ways that we can do that so we can shape the behaviors of the future? So people, I want to go to Veterans Memorial Stadium in Quincy. I'm going to go for a beer fest that has 50 plus breweries next week on July 15th. For a lot of people, that'll be their first time. Yeah. But now they understand the behavior by, oh, I can actually go to that place, have fun with friends, with family. You know, I, I know how to take the subway. I know what the walk is like. I know that there's free parking. And then that then you're teaching people rolls. basic life skills. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I can walk now. I can kick the subway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all from the Free Jacks, Free ladies Jacks, and gentlemen. Free Jacks CEO and life skills coach. Yeah, yes. yeah. That's yeah. It. That's it. He's on tour. He's on a. T he can help you with anything. Really. Hey, well, you know, you know, you really need help is this guy because he can't travel for nothing. <laughs> yeah, two rugby trips in <laughs> a row. I and know. I mean, we were literally doing not even on the way here. Did he tell you about on the way here? No, that's a whole. That's a that's whole. A, other again, show. it's more. It's a whole other show. Not going to bring up price line. I'm not going to do it. You could take the reservation. Well, based on his hat, I thought he was going to L.A. I don't know. So did I. Oh. Listen, he must be so disappointed. It's a part of the history. It's a part of the military. It is a part of history. Woodgy actually inserted himself in there and, and made sure that you had difficulties getting in. He got the he, – he's he, – the first thing he noticed when we were off camera was the hat, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. And I'm just pointing out that it's part of the history of the league, right? I mean – it is. Professional Absolutely. sports leagues throughout history always have attrition, subtraction, teams moving from yep. place to place. It's going to continue to happen, right? This is a 10-year-plus trajectory, and we're going to see new teams come in, and we're going to see some teams go out, and we're going to see some contraction, we're going to see expansion. It is not going to be a linear progression. Right. Overall, though, what we're seeing on a year-to-year -year basis is 30% increases in attendance, 50% increases in revenue you know, the revenue lines. That's awesome. We're still far away from where we need to be for this to be an enterprise, uh, but it's the inv we're investing heavily in bringing new fans in to the game. And so it's time we get to this 31 World Cup, we'll have, you know, 2 million fans in the United States who are passionate about, yeah. about rugby. Yeah. And on that note, there was an owner's meeting on Thursday yeah. in which you were in attendance. Uh, I don't want to get too deep into the weeds or get you in trouble with anybody at the league, but... What were some of the topics that were of importance for the ownership? Yeah, so I, I think you, you, you got to look at what is our plan for next year in terms of schedule and everything else. How are we maximizing attendance and ticket sales, and how do we shape a schedule that does that? How do we also potentially work with our um, friends at World Rugby and, of course, USA Rugby and Rugby Canada to make that happen? There are certain windows in the calendar where we have international release windows, and how do we work it out so that 
the product is not affected here, but we make sure our best are playing for the national team on those weeks. So schedule's an important piece to that. That's always a big one. Expansion is always a, you know, a, a conversation of importance. Also, how's everybody doing? What's the health of each franchise? And how's that going? And how can all the other owners help? And what does that look like? That's, that's also a really important piece. Um, so it's, it's things like that. Max, Pretty top level. That? We don't get, get too much in the weeds about, you know, whether it was the right um, thing to do with uh, scrum rules or something like that. It's not. We're not going to just dis we're going to just get rid of scrums altogether and just, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know. One of the best parts of the game. Yeah, you know, so we it is, totally. totally. Want to keep what I love about it. that list, though, Alex, and you didn't have to reveal too much, but I think it sells it for fans that are out there. As a, as a podcaster, uh, my partners and I, we listen to fans, and those are the things that fans are concerned yeah. about, all those things. And I think it's important for what the ownership to be concerned about for it to reflect what the fans are concerned yeah. about. And so I think it's uh, fans will love to hear all of what you said. Yeah, great, great. And, and you do put fans first. And, you know, look look at some franchises in American professional sports. The Cubs always draw, right? Yeah. And they might not always be good. So yeah. not necessarily does it translate, well, if you get wins, you're going to get fans. You guys put the fans mm -hmm. first. And that's the combination. That's what I think we got to focus and make sure. You know, everybody's learning this stuff on the fly, too. Right. So it's not a knock on, on any of the other franchises. Yeah. But you guys are leading the way. Yeah, you, you look at Fenway or Wrigley in this case uh, with the Cubbies. And even when the teams are bad, that is the star. You know, we talk about selling heroes. The facility, the yep. ballpark is the star. And it has been for 90-plus years. And Overrated. <laughs> the best one's on the south side. Or their guaranteed rate. Like, I mean, Either get way. good food. White Sox all the yeah. way. Forget the cups. Matt he's, and his he's tradition a communist. heritage. He's a communist. Uh, no, because, I mean, like, it's, that it's, only works for Fenway. All that nostalgia and stuff, that only works for Boston Roosevelt and Fenway. Road and seen and seeing Wrigley Field to what yeah. they've done recently because it's a pretty impressive fan experience. And, yeah. and it's good to hear that the Free Jacks are trying to uh, trying to create their own fan experience up there at Fort at, uh, you, know, you look at like what the Ricketts have done with Wrigley, you know, and certainly what has happened with Fenway over the last few years and just that whole experience around the ballpark, right? Yeah. And that's really cool. And then, you know, Fenway, they run, what, 365 events a year plus. You know, they've got the MGM concert and the House of Blues. And yeah, no, it's an awesome venue down there. And, I mean, I only say that because I came in here. I'm a, I'm a transplant. I'm a Red Sox fan. But, like, my fiance's diehard White Sox fan. But we live less than a mile from Wrigley. And it is awesome. Like, yeah. I mean, to, to be able to have that. And we were up on a rooftop last night. And the lights were lit up. And it's just, like, being in the city is awesome. So let's transition that right now. Let's yeah. talk about we are here in Chicago, right? The owners made the decision. It's a neutral venue. People can plan for it. Tell us about, like, this year experience so far with Seat Geeks, it's the Free Jacks' first time out here, and what you expect. Yeah, I, th I think uh, the Hounds and, and Peter's group is doing a fantastic job to, to pull this off in a fairly short time frame, to be honest. That, that decision was made um, fairly early on in the season, but it wasn't like we were planning on that last year at this time. We didn't even have a Chicago franchise. So for them to take the lead on that and really own this and, and build the festival experience around it, I think is really cool, and they're working really hard to make that happen, and today could be magical. Yeah, and, and I got, we got to throw a shout-out to Justin Dombrowski, Caitlin, James English, Andrew Newman. Like, this is a very skeleton crew that is doing a lot, right, which is pretty much all of Major League Rugby, right, people trying to make it work. But it can't be, you know, overemphasized enough, right, that short runway that they had leading up into that, taking off, fighting it. And I asked Jess, I was like, what are you going to do July 9th? And she's like, I don't know. Yeah. Right? <laughs> she's, she's like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, Ketchup like, like, yeah. Ah. Yeah, they've done an awesome job. Yeah. So it'll be really interesting. The neutral venue thing is, a, I think, it's a great in concept, and they they'll actually pull it off. And so, how does that roll out for the next few years? What does that look like? We certainly would have loved to host a championship, and as we know, San Diego also throws a great uh, product. So, you know, the neutral venue thing could be really cool. And I was down on the grass, and it's it's a great surface. Awesome. I was just wondering if it's if. How does this does this impact your, your team strategy at all? Coming from going different turfs. Yeah, I, I don't think it'll have much of an impact. You know, I, I think that the weather will be fine. It'll hold, the rain will hold off, and it'll actually be a great game. Two good defensive teams, both relatively physical, uh, both enormously talented. It's gonna be a good cool. one. Yeah. It's gonna be a good one. That's gonna be a good one. Um, all right, we got anything else for Max? No, we're we're good. Thank you. Max, you got anything else for the world? No, let's ride. All right, awesome. Let's ride. Who's that? Wait. Right. Count. One, H two, Huzz three. Huzzah! 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 All right. <laughs> I didn't know the line. Listening, Phil. Well, no, no, Matt, you don't know the line? Yeah. Aren't those guys like uh, the Jacks Rangers? Aren't those your boys? They oh, are. yeah. Boys. We're tight. They're fantastic. Yeah. You guys should see We're the tailgate tight. right now. It's 
It's going it? crazy. Oh, we'll there's, come back. We'll put Miggy out there. The Street X t-shirts for people who are stopping by, and it's great to see a bunch of the Hounds community becoming Free Jacks fans for the day. <laughs> All right, it's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> hey, one thing that I'm going to do is that Rob was able to catch up with Josh Larson. So before you leave, tell us about Josh Larson, the impact he's had on your team, and most importantly, the role he's taken since he's now been injured. You know, we had our award ceremony uh, a couple weeks ago, and it's just really important to point out to Josh how important he's been to the club overall, the history of the club, and how difficult his position was this year. You know, Josh really mm -hmm. leads through his example on the field. That's kind of always how he's, he plays, and he works really hard even in training, and to then not have that opportunity to learn how to lead in a different way, you know, kind of from behind and being more of the shepherd, and he's done a fantastic job of that. I think it's, it's that's really hard to do. And he's basically the mayor of Quincy yes. <laughs> at this point. Yes. You know, yes. Watching him talk to the fans yeah. was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, he's week. awesome. All and right, then, you know, some great, some great leaders on the field yeah. now who have really stepped up and kind of taken the on-field uh, role. The All right, awesome. Well, uh, we've got a little package with uh, Josh Larson, and on the back of that we'll come back with Andrew Guerra. I'm here with a legend of the game in the MLR and certainly with the Free Jacks. We have Josh Larson, second row with the Free Jacks. Now, Josh, um, gutted to have you injured early on, but you played a major role in the team from that point moving forward. Uh, what's this mean to somebody like yourself to continue to play a role and, and um, really get the boys engaged in what is going to be a spectacular final? Yeah, I think, like, personally, obviously, it's a uh, massive uh, uh, building on this from four years since we first started. But, you know, just majority of all the work in the club from the front office, you know, people in the community now seeing where we're at and stuff. So, um, you know, like so TK and all, the, and all the coaching staff and that sort of come from before. So it's, you know, four years of hard work to get to here now. And we've got one more game to hopefully put it all together. And have you, obviously, you've had an opportunity to talk with the boys. What has been your message, your theme that you've, brought forward all week with them in your preparation for the big game? Yeah, I think, you know, I think obviously there'll be, you know, generally a lot more cameras, a lot more nerves around that. But it's just got to backing ourselves, doing what we do well. I think, um, you yeah, know, the worst thing we could do is is come out here and not and not turn up and, and not play our game and back ourselves. So that's just been the key message. Just to play San Diego, you know, we know what they're about and stuff, and they're a very good team. Um, but so are we. So we're just coming out here, doing what we do best, and uh, don't go into our shell, back ourselves. You know, things will go wrong. It's, it's finals footy. It's who can recover from that quickest will win the game, yeah. Absolutely. One of the things that I noticed about your play is you lead from the front. I mean, you stick your nose in there, you get dirty, you're the first guy in, the last guy out. And obviously you're Tough, tough shoes to fill there. Um, has that been an attitude that you've tried to instill in the boys, or is that just something that the boys have taken on um, to fill up that role in the absence of a great leader? Uh, it's very kind of you, mate. <laughs> no, no. Uh, no, mate, honestly, it's Free Jacks guys. You know, we, we really mark ourselves on physicality and stuff, and especially our pack. You know, it's been one of our strengths all year, you know. Um, so hopefully we just do, uh, replicate that this weekend, you yeah. know. But no, it's next man up mentality. Guys come in and doing good jobs, you know, Connor Keys and Samessi and Regan. Um, you know, those guys done an outstanding job in the, in the pack and stuff, and they'll continue to lead very well. So no, it's just make, next man up mentality and uh, credit to coaches. You now, physicality is something we really measure and we really uh, achieve in this team, and it's just Free Jack's way we want to go about it. So, yeah. There's been a, a number of young guys coming through into the core you know we're talking about davidovitz obviously kyle secura uh and their their fabulous mullet i gotta ask this question which one of them has the best mullet oh it's a tough answer um he's going on record now folks yeah yeah i'm gonna go uh the call the eagle secura oh, okay. yeah, yeah i'll give him i'll give him the nod on that you know he's stuck with it i know he's got offered uh oh, oodles of money to shave it and he, he hasn't taken it away so uh that's him that's what he's about so i'll give the nod to him Sticking to his guns. You know, he should just go about 90 miles north here up to Wisconsin. He would fit in perfectly in that environment. He would be a cult figure in Wisconsin, too. I think half our team would be as well. You know, there's a few <laughs> yeah. mullets out there. Actually, yeah. Andrew Cochin's rocking a good one now. So, yeah, no, nah, it's uh, good, mate. It's a good environment. Good buzz going into this weekend. We're excited. One thing that's been abundantly clear as we've watched the home games in Quincy is how the town has really adopted you guys. And... You guys have certainly made your mark on the town. What's that transition like to go from that kind of niche team to becoming a team that the town rallies around? 
Yeah, I mean, honestly, the, uh, the town of Quincy is uh, remarkable for us. You know, it's kind of long-term plan of the, of the club to base itself. It's, you know, it's on the T-line, it's close to Boston, but the community's really rallied around us. Um, you come in there, you drive, you'll see the flags around there. People know what rugby is. You get guys on the street now talking about what rugby is. It's in the community and the schools in Quincy. So, uh, yeah, mate, it's just been a, it's been a really big growth uh, aspect for the club, and we're really excited to... You know, to stay there and, and build, keep building on, and you know, on that, you know, Fort Quincy. You know, he's kind of, it's uh, it's it's kind of this nickname it's become, but it's it's true. I mean, you know, the ground of veterans is awesome. It's close. It's you know, max five six thousand capacity. We're filling it up with five um, last couple of weekends. So it's it's really exciting uh, where it's going and and that. And it's come a long way since Weymouth. You know, Weymouth was great, but seeing that club and seeing it produce like the rest of the MLR, you know, slowly growing and stuff. You know, we're really comfortable there. So. Um, yeah, no, a big shout out to all the Jacks Rangers watching uh, the show. Um, I'm sure you guys will be. I know we'll see a few hundred of you guys out here this weekend, and uh, no, we're really excited. Hopefully, and bring home that shield for you, up the Jacks. Up the Jacks. Yeah. Huzzah is what I think they yeah, say. Huzzah. Right? Yeah, huzzah. I should say that. You should say three, two, one, huzzah. You'd love it. Yeah, yeah. Right. Three, two, one, huzzah. There you go. There it is, folks. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Appreciate it, mate. All good. I'm here with Mitch Jacobson, the captain of the New England Free Jacks. Eastern Conference champions. Um, I got to know, you guys came in uh, today. Yep. Uh, how are the lads feeling coming into tomorrow's match? Oh, we're extremely excited. You know, we got on the plane this morning, arrived here a couple of hours ago, and then just had our captain's run now. So it's good to get out here, play, uh, run around on a grass pitch. Um, and I suppose, yeah, we've been working towards this goal all year, and to finally be here is, is exciting. Obviously, one of the things coming away from the 2022 season is a little bit of a disappointment from that loss in the semifinal to New York, uh, a rivalry for sure. Um, both Rain uh, sorry, Jacks Rangers and, and Free Jacks fans were massively disappointed. Obviously, the, the lads were disappointed. Are you guys coming in tomorrow with a bit of a chip on your shoulder and something to prove? Oh, well, I think... You know, if we disregard 2022, there's a, there's a lot of players in this team that, that didn't play in 22. Uh, obviously, there's there's a couple that have, and, and they, they they might have a chip on their shoulder for whatever reason. But it's a new season, it's a it's a new team. Uh, we come in here uh, and assembled this team to, to win the competition, and um, we we haven't come here just to, to take part. You know, we want to we we've got the confidence that we can win the game tomorrow if uh, if we play well enough. And uh, yeah, we come in here to to win the thing. One last question for you, Mitch. You know, talking about last year, Bowden Waka uh, kind of coming in late to the team, uh, loss of, of Josh Larson. Um, you guys have taken an X man up approach. Has that been an overt theme throughout the team, or is that just something, an attitude that the boys have carried into day to day training and, and matches on Saturdays and Sundays? Yeah, those two guys are obviously extremely important uh, members of this team. and. Um, Wax took a shot a couple of weeks back, and and Lazi's obviously done a shoulder, um, so he's got a pretty serious injury. But they're still in and around the environment, and they they add a lot in the environment. Um, but yeah, like you say, we do have a, a next man up approach. You know, like we've got a, a very good squad, and there's a lot of depth in the squad. And I think that's shown throughout the year when we've got uh, injuries and stuff to various positions. We've been able to still perform very well um, with that. Yeah, like you say, that next man up approach. Uh, from what I understand, there's going to be a lot of Jacks Rangers and Free Jack Faithful coming into Chicago and showing up here in Bridgeview at the Dogtown. Uh, do you have any special message for those that might be watching, either back home or in stadium? Oh, yeah, they're awesome, uh, the Free Jacks fans and the, and, and the Jacks Rangers alike. Um, awesome that they're going to make the trip here to Chicago. I know it's, it's not a cheap flight to get over here from Boston. So, yeah, we're excited to have them here, and hopefully we can put on a show that they're proud of and, you know, all things go well we, we walk away with the shield so that'll be even better and we'll go and celebrate with them uh after the game and with that i think we've got to make uh phil harris proud and say one two three huzzah yeah, there we go <laughs> folks there it is thank Cheers, you very much Appreciate it. i'm here with scott Matthew, head coach of the new england free jacks the eastern conference champion and they will be competing against the san diego legion tomorrow on saturday in dogtown now Coach, I have a couple questions that I want to ask, and one of them is, you know, San Diego plays a real fast game, and you guys play a fast game at points, too. What is the key to slowing down San Diego Legion? 
I think for us, we, we're more concerned about our game, to be honest. We, we're really happy with how we go about our defensive side of the ball. We put a lot of pressure on the ball. Uh, so we haven't changed anything from our side. You know, we, we, we're bringing what we've done the whole season. We've conceded the least points. Uh, so for us, it's about sticking to our, our processes and our defense. And, you know, that we, we wait and see what happens on game day. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I think sometimes the tendency is to look back at that matchup early on in the season and see if people can analyze and take anything away from it. But from a coaching staff side of things, is that in the past and you're just looking forward or is that something you kind of took a look at, seeing where you can make improvements, so you can make adjustments in playing head to head against the Legion? Uh, not really. We had a look at that game in round three, well, in our review in round three, you know, and we, we kind of took the learnings back then. Um, and uh, I think it was it was a really good learning curve for us back then, you know, about uh, boarding on a whole a whole lot of new new players and getting them into the system. And they they taught us a good lesson early on. And I think we took that lesson, and you know, we've shown steady improvement since then. And uh, I think we've found a bit of rhythm later on in the season. So uh, it was a really good learning curve for us. Yeah. You've talked about just the absolute stifling defense, and we saw it last week in the Eastern Conference Final. One of the weaknesses of San Diego is there's the second highest penalized team. Is that something that you guys have targeted in your game plan or are you just going to play it as you see it? Yeah, look, we trust the officials. We have a really good official tomorrow and also on the, on the sideline. And, you know, they go about their business really well. They do a great job of previewing each team. And you know, there's, no, there's nothing we need to do there. I, I think the whole thing for us is that it's, it's, it's focusing on ourselves. You know, this week has all, all been about that. It's about what are our process, what do we do well each week to make sure that we take confidence into the game. And we've just stuck to stuck to that. You know, we haven't concerned ourselves too much with, you know, you do your preview on the opposition, but you don't want to be focusing too much of your attention there. You know, you want to focus on making sure that you, you're right and you're primed for, for achieving what we want to achieve, you know. Yeah. Um, last year, obviously, you guys had a phenomenal season and came up just a little bit short against New York in the semi. Uh, there's almost a redemption here. Does that add any pressure to tomorrow's game for the Free Jacks? No, I don't think so. I think the redemption was last week, is winning the conference final. You know, I think this game is, you know, what a what a privilege, really. What an opportunity to get out here and you get to come to a new place. We haven't been to Chicago yet, and the boys are really excited about it. So I think the, the monkey's off our back from last week. Uh, we kind of feel a, feel a bit of freedom coming into this game, to be honest. Yeah, I think that comes from a more of a game model perspective. I think um, San Diego team that really are exceptional with ball in hand. They can move the ball around quickly, so they they know that's their, their strength. So they play, they, they structure their, their game according to that. I think uh, as our strength is really in transition. So really good defensive sets, uh, forcing turnover, and being able to play really quickly from the from 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 turning over the ball. So we train that uh, uh, probably a lot more. Whereas you find probably uh, you know San Diego. Are, are highly organized and how they run their attack systems and, and that's their their niche and that, that makes them great you know and I think on the reverse side this is kind of the transition stuff makes us really good you know Stade Toulouse the most decorated rugby team in the world is coming to Salt Lake City to face off against the USA national team it's a game that promises to be filled with passion grit and determination don't miss out on the chance to witness history in the making. Join us September 17th at America First Field. Get your tickets now at therugbyalliance.com. Down. 
for the Seawolves. And there's your opening by the captain having put it within four. Hadding looking for a break. Diaz was pointing toward the sideline. Look at that looping pop. He had it. Alright, we are coming to you live from SeatGeek Stadium here in Chicago, Illinois, and it is summertime shy, and right now we have one of the hometown guys. Uh, he is an Eagle, a NOLA Gold representative, uh, and also our graphics operator's boyfriend. Uh <laughs> Andrew, you're coming back from a pretty serious injury, right? Yep. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you remember, All Blacks playing Team USA, FedEx Field, uh, and I'd say there were probably three guys that had a good game against the All Blacks, and you're one of them. And unfortunately, you had that injury toward the end of that game. You and Nate Augsburger and Ryan Mattias had good games <laughs> against an otherwise uh, bleak backdrop uh, for USA yeah. Rugby. Yeah. And unfortunately, your day ended a tad prematurely or, you know, with that injury. Yeah. But you got hurt playing the All Blacks. Yeah, <laughs> cool story, cool story. <laughs> so how are you now? Uh, yeah, doing good. Uh, so for people that don't know, I – Went out during the game, I got rolled into from the side, broke my tibia and fibula, uh, compound fracture. So pretty severe injury if you ask any doctor, anybody around. So any uh, doctor, you can ask anybody. Yeah, anybody. <laughs> no, no. You don't need a doctor yeah, to tell you that. My body just yeah, I'm, I'm saying if you need yeah. medical advice, you ask yeah. the doctor. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so serious injury. It's probably right? good you saw a doctor after that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, yeah, yeah. definitely good. So uh, immediately following that, I was in the hospital for about seven days, had a surgery when I first got there. Uh, where they kind of just get the bone put back together, not back together, but back in place with external fixator, took a day off, and then the next day got the uh, a metal rod put down my tibia. Uh, so it was going to be a long recovery to begin with, and I knew that from the get-go. But then fast forward about nine months, still having issues, uh, bones healed, but still having pain. Um, so we started brainstorming on what, what the problems could be. Uh, they thought it could be scar tissue, they thought it could be the hardware, I had a surgery done to get some scar tissue removed. Uh, then another three months go by, still having pain. Uh, and that kind of leads us to the only possible thing could be is the hardware. So I had Ugh. three screws removed in November of uh, 2022. So an already long recovery was prolonged even more. Uh, leads us to now, which is about 20 months since the injury. And uh, I like. Thank God. I got, there's days where I sit there and go, like, I don't know if I would be able to do the things I love. Like, I very, like, uh, as a player, I was maybe, like, self-admittedly, like, not the best. Or my first skill of rugby, I'm not going <laughs> to kick a grubber down, chase it down. Like, I very much relied on, like, physical abilities, and I enjoy that stuff. And I enjoy working out. I enjoy doing all the physical anything. Like, just daily life, not just rugby. So there was definitely tough days there. Like, oh, am I ever going to be able to do these things again with, without pain? And uh, 20 months now, I can sit here and say that I can. So, like, thank God. And uh, it's been a hell of a journey, but I've got to a point now in the recovery where I feel the closest I've been to fully healed. Um, so, yeah, that's the, I guess that's a full update. And long story short of the, the injury, the, what's taken so long in the recovery, and uh, where I'm standing today. So what gives you the motivation? <clears throat> what's the motivation when you're dealing with that to, like, come back and, and to actually – you know, have that drive to keep going? Is it to get back on the pitch and represent the Eagles again? Or was it to be live on this uh, halftime show or the yeah. pregame show? <laughs> well, and, and before, before – Let him answer my question, <laughs> I will, please. I will, but I think I need some context because Andrew's been putting out along with Invictus, Pat yeah. Caulfield. And yeah, Invictus. Dr. Pat Caulfield, been, unbelievable. Yeah, he's been putting out some great, uh, you know, some great uh, social media posts just about how freaking hard this guy works yeah. in the gym to get back. So I yeah. think that's an important part yeah, of yeah, the yeah. question. Yeah, so, I mean, to answer your question – the, the motivation, I wouldn't say, like, all that stuff's external, right? Like, the external motivation would come from if, uh, to put on a USA jersey again, put on a Noel Gold jersey again, play an MLR again, whatever it was. If To me, it was never that. To me, it was completely personal and a complete personal challenge to myself when I, like, when I first got to the hospital, like, the first three days I was there, I sat there, and my girlfriend, my girlfriend was in school in Ohio, he flew out to go with me, to sit in the hospital with me for the entire week. My dad was at the game. He sat next to my bed the entire time. 
Um, and to me, it was just a personal challenge to not let this be the end, like the end of my story, the end of who I am. Um, and not even as, not even as like a person. Obviously, I'm not dead, but like just as a, like, like almost like an ego death. Yeah. Like this is this is something. I know rugby's not who I am. It's something that I do, but I, I didn't want it to end like that. And that was a, that was my motivation. It was all it was a personal challenge. I laid in that bed for the first three days, and most of my life I've been extremely motivated. Never poor me attitude, never why me attitude. And the first three days I was there, I sat there and cried, and I was like, "How the hell could this happen to me?" Uh, one second I'm on top of the world playing against the All Blacks for USA, um, and then in a split second my freaking leg snapped in half, and <laughs> I, I sat there for three days and I fucking cried, and I was going, "Why me?" But on that, like, eventually I got to like the third day being in the hospital. I remember vividly the physical therapists come in there. They want you to get up out of the bed. And I was in such excruciating pain, I could not get up. And I, I, and I just laid there. And then I remember after the second day, I laid there and I, I, at, at night. And I said, you know, this, tomorrow. You're talking second day post-surgery. Second day, yeah, second post-surgery. day post-surgery. I laid there and I said, you know, tomorrow, tomorrow when the physical therapist comes in the room, I'm getting out of this freaking bed. And, and I'm going to change this around. Like, I'm not, like, no more poor me. I don't know how long this is going to take. I don't know what it's going to take. But whatever it is, I'm going to do. And I'm going to do it to my best ability. Like, um, so on that third day, physical therapist came back in, and I got up out of bed, and, and I started to walk, obviously with crutches and the walker and stuff like that. But you know, to me, that was just uh, that was beginning with a mental challenge of going like, I, I'm going to get through this, whatever it is, I'm going to get through it. Um, and it's just, it's been it's external. Externally, I've kind of blocked all that out. To me, every single day I wake up and I know that there's a challenge in front of me, and I'm going to I'm going to take it head on, and it's for myself and for my family. Um, like my family has always been a huge support to me and I want to make them proud. I want I, like them, them, I know that crushed them to see me like that. Of course. And, and I like, that's just even more motivation for me to, to get back to full strength. Not even, not just as a rugby player, but as a person, like just to be able to do things that I love every single day. Um, so yeah, so lo- long story short, external motivation really out the door. It's, it's total internal motivation to get back to to who I know. And you're ready to rock again. But, but, yeah. that, but that internal motivation is something that's very much been a part of Andrew's DNA from the get-go. I mean, you know, you just, for those that don't know, this is a guy that came from um, Notre Dame College, yep. right? Uh, a, a, a smaller rugby program, smaller school. It's not, you know, the Life University is the well-known, but, but definitely yeah. has a great history yeah. and yeah. a great program. Um, tenth selection in the 2020 draft by the Nola Gold. One rookie of the year for the league, and then he gets immediately selected in his rookie season to represent the Eagles. Goes on tour to Europe, England, debuts against Ireland yeah. in Dublin, and then goes on to play against All Blacks. So you're talking about a guy who has always beat the odds, and you're showing it once yeah. again. But I want to go back to that point. Do you ever, as you reflect upon where you come from and where you are now, do you ever and and say, well? My God, I've, I've had a really good, a, a, a great rise to rugby, and yeah. I'm going to define my career once again. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I, I would be coming out of college like, and saying, oh, I'm going to be playing for USA in a year from now. Uh, like, remind you, when I was in college, I was never selected to be an All-American. Um, so I, I never really had those, uh, those high honors. Like, I have a good all-conference, stuff like that. But I always had the faith and belief in myself, like, you know, I should be there. I should be doing that. So, yeah, when I got selected, I, uh, I just continued that belief. And, and, and I, I, I didn't think – I never really thought, like, oh, I'm going to be playing for the Eagles or whatnot. But I was kind of, like, every single day to stack the wins together. And eventually it, it built up to, to being selected for them and having what people saw as a meteoric rise. But to me, it's been – this has been a built-up built up, uh, journey since I was young, since I was – since I was like freaking, I played. I, mean, I started playing competitive sports when I was three years old, and ever since then, this has been a built-up journey to it. Um, I didn't really think about what the future was. Just take it day by day. But yeah, looking back at it now, it's crazy to think how fast it all happened. And uh, I'm very thankful to have great teammates around me and a great team that supported me, and always had an unbelievable support system since I was young that helped me get to that point. So, like, yeah. Hey, and if you could talk about it, just almost on cue, Tim Falcon of the Noah Gold. And, and the ownership group there have just shown up off camera, but supported you through this process because I think they're an important part to it. Oh, yeah. Process. Yeah, Mr. Falcon's been unbelievable. Ryan Fitzgerald's been unbelievable. Kane Thompson uh, reached out talked to me. 
you know, those guys, uh, from the get-go, they never put any major pressure on me to be like, oh, what's going on, what's going on, what's going on? They, they always support me from the get-go. Um, and yeah, they, they've been just, uh, just as much as providing stuff for me, they've also been like huge, uh, just uh, providing extra motivation when you talk to them, like, you know, just stay the course, you're gonna get through this and everything will be okay. So they've always, they've been a great support throughout this entire thing too. All right, so you're a free agent in essence right now, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> We can't talk about that right now. Well, I got, you know, I got ownership right there. I'll put him under pressure. <laughs> Andrew, you could take a cue from the you know run, pass, or kick interview process. Yeah, if yeah. You want to. I'm gonna kick that, kick that, <laughs> so, yeah, or pass, kick, kick that, the pass. One of the other. Take a pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kick that far away as well as you can go. But hey, Andrew, I mean, inspirational. I love what you're talking about. Where you're going out now. We have your captain from the Eagles over there who's uh, a little banged up as well, too. We'll be bringing him on here shortly. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this isn't a clinic on injuries that you received during rugby, although it seems like in the top power of this show it, ain't tennis. it is. But if you take anything from this, man, your inspiration, your way to do it, right? Like, you were in the dumps, right? Like, you yeah. were feeling sorry for yourself, and that's a normal reaction. That's a human yeah, emotion, right. Right? right? But to be able to take that, turn that around, and said. Nah, I'm going to punch that in the face. This isn't going to be me. I'm going to go out. I'm going to live with it. Like, kudos to you, man. There's a lot to take out of that. Everybody watching this can take that push forward, you know, and go and get help. You know, This, this is a story that needs to be told by the league. Stories like this. Yeah. The story of redemption, come back, defining your own terms, defining who you are, working yourself back to form. Yeah. Uh, what a great story. Always an inspiration. Yeah. And I, I, I'm just – glad that I've been able to get to know you a little bit over the course of the last two years, and I can't wait to see what the future holds in rugby for you and, and, and beyond. And your girlfriend's helping us with graphics. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Aviana. Uh, Avi! But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think a message of anybody that gets injured ever is like, uh, what I've learned through this process, you, be, you have to be a self-advocate, all right? So you learn about your injury, you learn what the right questions to ask, you learn how, the, how everything works, so, you, so you're most prepared when you go into those meetings with doctors, you go into meetings for, with anybody um, while you're recovering. So I think you have to be a self-advocate, educate yourself about whatever's going on, and, and, and so you're, you're most prepared. And uh, to finish this, I'd like to give a shout out to Invictus Health and Recovery, uh, Dr. Patrick Caulfield. He's been unbelievable in uh, helping me with my recovery. I met him nine months into the process, but ever since I met him, it's been, uh, he, he's changed it completely. He's uh, problem solved everything with me, and he's been a great partner going through this. So uh, just want to give a shout out to him. He's been, he's been awesome to me. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, awesome. Well, Andrew Guerra, thank you very much for coming on, telling your story. Uh, we're about to switch this over, get the party started. DJ Beamish <laughs> has taken the stage oh, I boy. see out there. Uh, you know, just opening up for Shaq, no big deal, just like the most famous man on television. Uh, I'd just yeah. rather watch you dance. Let's dance, yeah. baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's a little bit early in the morning for me yeah. to be dancing, yeah, a little yeah. bit less coffee. Yeah, for everybody uh, else watching, too. For everybody else watching. Yeah. But it's a show. Yeah. It's yeah. a show. <laughs> uh, but anyways, all right, thank you, Andrew. Uh, yeah, when we come guys. back, we're going to be bringing on Sam Harris. We'll have Bryce Campbell. We'll throw it back to the Big Dog podcast style, a little bit of something that we did. And then we're also going to go out to the parking lot where the Free Jacks fans, Woo, where the Jacks Rangers are there. We're going to do a little bit of a contest, if you will, to see who's the best. And uh, we'll be right back after this. So go ahead and uh, st stick around. Yeah. Sure. Stick sure. around. Go ahead and stick, stick around. We'll have a lot of fun. <laughs> it's catchy. That's, that's a catchy. Stick phrase. around. Okay, yeah. I'm going to use that from now on. I'll yeah. forget that 10 minutes from now. All right. Be back. When you pick up a ball, you also pick up a legacy. A legacy that stretches beyond your current team and built on the backs of those who came before you with hard work and discipline and to those who will come after you we promise it won't be easy there will be days when you feel like you to quit when you're in the cold in the rain and in the mud on those days, we will be there when you need it most.
the one and the only Steve-O here. This is his first uh, rugby game. What are your thoughts on it? Very large men violently hitting each other. Watch us for free on TRN. I use Thorn products pre and post workout to maximize my recovery, muscle growth, and make sure that I can be my best self on the field. Thorn's a supplement company that I can trust. They're NSF certified for sports. So I know that I can take this and know what's in their product. I use their protein, get my muscles nice and big. The products I use with Thorn have minimal ingredients. They're high quality, they're clean, they're batch tested, tastes amazing, and it made everything in my recovery and my performance better. If you're not recovering off the pitch, you're not your best self on the pitch. Thorn gets me there. Stade Toulouse, the most decorated rugby team in the world, is coming to Salt Lake City to face off against the USA national team. It's a game that promises to be filled with passion, grit, and determination. Don't miss out on the chance to witness history in the making. Join us September 17th at America First Field. Get your tickets now at therugbyalliance.com. Gotta keep my fur coat close because I'm up boss and I'm way too far. It's picked up and it's gonna be Walker going the other way. Jackson Davis, the bus is full. Oh, no, they, they come for me, boy, I'm zero degrees. Way too far. With the right plan, the right team, and hard work, even the most unpredictable events can be overcome. At USI, you have the whole team on your side, protecting you from the unexpected and making sure you bounce back better than ever. We take the time to understand your concerns and provide solutions with customized game plans for you and your business. It's major league focus and results for you. And we call it the USI One Advantage. We got the hits. We got the kicks. Oh God, that looked way too good. The passes, the athletes, and the fans. 
without the pride and the passion. All we need is you. I really wanted to do something special here in one of the best cities in the world um, with a really special group of people. For us to kind of sign it off like this, it makes me really proud and something that I'll, I'll take with me for a long, long time. For us to be able to come together and do something really special like we did today, it makes it all worth it. The new season is here. Yeah! I would define mental fitness as the ability to, to handle the ups and downs that, that uh, come our way. I would say mental health and fitness is being able to be strong and also knowing it's okay to be sad and like to get through an issue. I like the, the use of the word fitness because it is something you have to work at, just like physical fitness. It doesn't come naturally and you have to keep applying yourself to build the habits, build the routine, figure out what works for you. Same way you practice your physical fitness, also being mindful of your, the mental side of things, whether that's meditation or reflecting, grateful for certain things, just stopping to acknowledge it. You know, sometimes you can get caught up in all the stress of training and, you know, reviewing film and the, the life of being a major league rugby player. I think it changes every day, so being mentally fit would be able to bounce back from things and, and not let things affect you too much. Having the ability to put one foot in front of the other. Skill. Emotions, stress. Everyone runs into, you know, tough times, good times. It's your ability to manage. Being able to constantly sustain and get over disappointments, and I guess just staying content with, with what's going on around you and with you.
Ladies still, and gentlemen, welcome to you, 2023 <laughs> MLL Finals. Way to ruin my intro, guys. We're live. But I didn't tell you that, so it doesn't matter. And now yeah. we got Luke White. Yeah, we want you guys coming on, but right now we're getting ready to go out to the parking lot because we've got guys ready out there. Ty Braga is ready to go right there. So, Ty, go ahead. Uh, tell us what's popping out there. Uh, Free Jacks Nation. Bruce. All right, so go ahead. They're live. Tell them they're live. You got Ty. So go ahead. You got Bruce here from Ty. Welcome, Day. rugby fans. Ty Braga from the Rugby Rant Podcast Show here, representing Next Level Rugby. And we're down here on the ground outside the stadium for the tailgating experience. And the fans are gathering in their droves. I've taken the opportunity to seek out one special person from Tight Head Brewing. This is Bruce Durr a great sponsor, a great lover of rugby and contributor to the rugby community. But Bruce, really, tell me a little bit, why is it tight head brewing? So I played rugby for about 13 years, uh, college, uh, nine years here in Chicago with the Griffins. And uh, it's something that meant something to me when I went to open my brewery. So uh, it lent itself to a great name of a brewery. And Oh, of course. That, that, that's, it's all that ends after that. So Right. And for those folks who aren't familiar with Tight Head Brewing, you surely will be soon enough because we've got not only Bruce here, but some of his finest beers brought to us for the opportunity for the Free Jacks fans and San Diego Legion standing ready behind me. You can hear them. They're loud. They're proud. And they're here to be able to compete in the boat race of the season. Oh, let's hear it. Look at this crowd. The cohort is ready with the Jacks Rangers to compete against each other, and we are going to put them to the test. Now, as we, as we get ready to be able to let this Legion and Free Jacks wild, Bruce, we're going to make sure that you're going to be the one to start it off here with Tight Head Brewing being with the fans over here on ground zero outside the stadium getting ready. You're going to start it off for us today. I believe you're going to be the first one to be able to touch that beer. So let's count it down on three, two, one. Over to you, Bruce. Well, here we have it, folks. It is head to head as the first races are off. We're on to number two. Oh, we have a second shot over here, and it's head to head in the final round. We have on the left with Sadia, and the Free Jacks take the opportunity, and with that, the win to the Jacks Rangers. But will that be the story that is told for the rest of today? We don't know. Stick around because we have the final coming up soon. Oh, wow. Look at that, Jax. Rangers getting it done. San Diego Legion. Look at those guys down there. They're having a great time down there. Tie Head Bruin. Uh, man, look at that. We'll go back to that. Tie Head Bruin out in the parking lot. Those guys are getting at it. But now we're coming in. We're going to do it a little bit different. We are back inside the stadium. I am here with Sam Harris and uh, Bobby Dice of the Chicago Hounds. We're flipping the Big Dog podcast around on its head. I'm coming out from behind the camera. I'm still doing this. But now I get to interject, get to talk with you guys. Uh, you guys already know Thomas Grant Wheels if you've been tuning in. If you haven't, then you're wrong. Um, but Sam, welcome. Thanks, mate. It's great to see you with a the, with the, with the haircut and a shave. Uh, you really scrubbed up nicely for today in front of the camera. Um, hey, what an occasion. This is going to be such a great day. Yeah. Yeah, I miss you guys. I feel like it's been forever. It's been like a couple weeks. You guys went, you know, you guys, when I wasn't with you, you guys were winning. So my fiance said to me, she goes, are you not going to any more Hounds games anymore? It's like the only two Hounds games I missed all season, and you guys end up winning. Um, you know, high expectations at the start of the season when we were down in Florida, right? High expectations. And then coming into the league, right? It's a little bit tougher than what you originally thought. Yeah, not, I wouldn't say it was tougher than I originally thought. I think, like, there was – whilst we were scrapping and trying to put together a team and a roster and, and figure out how we're going to train and, and our schedule – everybody else was getting better 
and um, you know e even pre-Christmas they were getting better. So I think um, the, the league, you know, I was hopeful at the start of the year, and and, and as everybody was. Um, but yeah, it's a testament to all the other clubs in the MOR in general that this is a legitimate league and everybody's improving out of sight every year. Now, Bobby, as far as like, you know, last year, you guys were in Austin, right? Uh, wings clipped going into the postseason, still having that taste in your mouth of wanting to come back and actually getting to unite with a lot of the players here. Some actually playing, Rossi over here playing in the final now, right, for San Diego. Um, but what was that been like, you know, being able to continue to play with these guys from Austin that you developed those relationships and then meld that together with the L.A. guys? Yeah, I mean, it was incredible to come here with, with Sam and, and all the guys. Um, it was nice to have some sort of connection before so we're not starting completely from scratch. But I think we probably thought it would have gelled a little bit quicker than it did. You know, we had quite a few guys from Austin from L.A., but at the end of the day, it was, it was a new place. It was, it's a new new team. Um, the relationships change, uh, and it just took us a while to, to learn how to win with our group. Um, and eventually we, we did in the end. Um, it just took us a bit longer than we thought, but um, it was an incredible season. I, I wouldn't take it back. We learned a lot of lessons, and um, yeah, it was great to finish on a high. And Sammy, more importantly, the the new change for you. Obviously, uh, you've come from Austin. H how have you enjoyed the experience of growing an organization from the complete ground up? And, and you know, how have you enjoyed that experience? Yeah, it, it's been a great experience. Like we've be we've built like rosters one part, but also the the backroom staff, coaching staff, all that stuff's another element. And, and we've put together a group of great people and uh, it just it just needs time. That's all it needs really. And, and I think you know, moving into next season, the ability to have an off season and a pre-season, it bodes well for, you know, and, and, and that's, I think from an Austin point of view, and, and I don't like to look back at Austin and yep. talk about Austin or LA too much because we're the Chicago Hounds yep. and, and I identify and we identify like that. But, you know, going into season 2022, we had a really good preseason, off season as well, and it, it laid a really good platform. We weren't able to have that this year. So I'm really looking forward to following that roadmap for next year and then uh, coming into the season, all guns blazing. Yeah, excellent. And Bryce, for you, you've been around the MLR for a long time. What's been so pleasing about the, the strides the league's taking? Where's the improvement that you've seen happen? What's awesome is now, I mean, at least if I put myself in a fan shoes, you could watch a game every weekend and any team can win. Yeah. Um, that's what has made it you know, so much more enjoyable. Um, the, the playing field is a lot more level than it has been in the past. And um, the standards just gone through the roof. Um, it's it's a blast to play in because especially for an American and Americans coming through, yep. uh, having the goal to play play in this league and compete, and you can you can now say it's you know it's voting to be one of the one of the better competitions uh, around the world, and it's still going to take a, a lot more time to really get there. But it, I know if you look back three years, it looks like a completely different game than yep. it did then. So we keep on this trajectory. Um, young kids in America can grow up and play in one of the best leagues in the world. It's yep. going to be incredible. And up, yeah, with the World Cup on the horizon as well, 2031, a really crucial eight-year period, particularly for the Eagles. Sam, for you, do you feel like the trajectory, mainly for USA Rugby, is heading in that right direction with all the things they're doing here? Great question. So from my, from my personal point of view, I was in Japan for eight years leading up to that World Cup, yeah. and then I moved here. So now I'm here eight, eight years lead up for that World Cup. So I think what USA Rugby has done really well at the moment is put Scott Lawrence in charge. Yeah. Um, it's in an interim role. I think it should be a full-time role. I think we should give him the keys to the castle. He's the right man for the job. Um, whether he, whether he's given that or not, at the moment, he's putting so much hard work in and, and putting not just at the top layer, the secondary layer, the third layer, putting a lot of work and effort in there. And I think that's the pathway yeah. forward. And so um, interesting part about Japan is against USA. Like it's a condensed population, 140 million, smaller area. America's a larger population, but a huge, vast country. Yeah. And there's a lot of there's a lot of sticking points for USA rugby in terms of like proximity and, and just like the culture of kind of we need to all be funneling up to the USA. Yeah. Eagles, similar to what the All Blacks have done for so long. And, uh, and I think there's so many people with different agendas and 
trying to achieve different things, whereas we, we just really need to get on board yeah. for the USA Eagles. And, and I'm really excited if we are able to do that, that, that it will serve USA well for 2031. Similar thoughts for you, Bryce, from a player's perspective? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's just it's good now, at least the, the league and USA Rugby have decided, hey, we really need to, to make our national team as best as we can yeah. and put those structures in place to make it easier transition for someone playing in MLR to, to make for the Eagles. And um, everyone just wants this, this, this sport to grow and, and us to do well in 2031. And uh, it's just all hands on deck. And hopefully we can just get everyone aligned. Yeah. And I think that'll happen. That's certainly exciting times. Sam, you've got the unique position today where you get a, I guess, look over an even playing field. You don't have the coach's hat on today. But if you did, how do you approach a grand finals week from, from your perspective? You know, obviously high emotion, high tension. What do you do? Yeah, I think everybody's got their own different technique. I think um, you've really got to manage the emotions of the week yep. and, and manage the energy that you put into every day and, and every minute and, and the focus that you, you put on you know, into the game and you know it's it's not just finals but you can as a coach you can overanalyze the game and and try to fit too much into a very important game when really you probably need to simplify the message and make it really simple about how the yeah. how you think you're going to win this game yeah and what you have to do right so and then when you get to game day managing the energy of that yeah um and and then yeah i think just it's a real timing thing sometimes you can see it when teams get out and they just look flat for whatever reason and so I think it's from a head coach point of view from a head of performance point of view yeah it's a real job to to manage the energy levels and really ramp it up for that kickoff for sure it's going to be it's going to be an outstanding fixture uh Bobby for you you've played both of these sides before where is this game one we're going to do a bit more of a deep dive and block three on the the analysis of the game but from a player's point of view where is this game one today um I think these teams will be pretty pretty level at set piece. Yeah. Um, I think New England do a really good job of just flying in D. And they got a lot of pay. They create a lot of turnovers. Um, it's I think it's a matter of if San Diego can exploit that wide channel and get around it or over it. Yeah. Um, if they can, I think San Diego's got the upper hand. But if New England can do what they've done a lot this season and uh, create havoc Why? with their defense, then... I think it's their game, so it's a he matter does. of I think that wide channel, um, yeah. whether San Diego can get around them um, or New England, yeah, got them down. Well, Ginty, I'm feeling slightly uncomfortable here. I've been taken over by another Chicago hound. I'm just getting absolutely swarmed. <laughs> uh, well, the, the Blues man. Brothers man over here. <laughs> yeah. I just watched Blues Brothers last I'll night. Take those off. <laughs> take those off. Looking good. Um, talking about USA Eagles, and uh, we just did that. I could barely hear you because we got DJ Beamish down there, oh, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, DJ Beamish opening up for. DJ Shaq Diesel is yeah. putting on an absolute clinic. The, crowd, that, the yeah. crowd was going off. Yeah. And, DJ imagine Beamer. putting that on your CV, you get to open up for Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. That's not bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, he opens up every day for the Chicago Hounds. If you come in here, it's funny because we are in an absolute soccer facility. Like, the Chicago Fire still reside here, yeah. right? You have the women's team here. And then you have these rugby guys with this little corner of a gym as you walk in, and it's bumping. It's like you come in it and it's just like a dance club. Everyone's having a good time. Um, that's Is that a tradition? Do you guys do that in Austin or is that an L.A. thing? I mean, because he was in Austin too. Do you guys spin it? Or was that just a, a, an L.A. thing when you guys were doing that? And it got adopted over here. But that's gone on to this is phenomenal. Yeah, I think what um, what Peter Bernick and the ownership group, Matt Satchwell, Phil Groves, um, Darren Morris, and then you know, for the CEO, yeah. James English, James is the one that has been driving all the standards and putting everything together. And then he's got a team underneath him that have been working like minions. They, they've put a lot of work into this and uh, they've done a great job. I think, you know, when we, when we hosted Utah for that round three fixture, yeah. that was the 